Hi, welcome to another episode of Swaraj's Standpoint. A lot of things have changed in Punjab since we last spoke about it. It seems the tables have turned politically. A lot has happened. Suddenly, Congress's captain Amrinder Singh is no longer ca- Congress's captain. He's a captain of an alliance which will also include the BJP. The Akalis are now with the BSP. The Aam Aadmi Party is expected to be in an alliance with the Congress, which is now under Charanjit Singh Chani, a name no, a lot of people had not heard of until a few weeks ago. So in Punjab, the whole farm protest thing has just turned over its head, so as to say. So the question now begs us: Do we have a solution in sight to the farmer protest, to the farm laws, the farm laws which have been stalled by the Supreme Court? Can they see the light of the day finally? Earlier today, when Captain Amrinder Singh was addressing a press conference, he said that I'm going to meet Home Minister Amit Shah tomorrow, which is October 28, and discuss the solution to the farm laws. When he spoke about the seat sharing arrangement also with the BJP, he said, we want to figure out a solution to the farm protests and the farm laws so that we can take the farmers together into this alliance. And needless to say, any alliance which can work out a solution for the farmers, a long-term solution for the farmers, would be the favorite to win the elections in Punjab in 2022, or perhaps be in a position where they can be the kingmakers. So let's talk about the farm, the possible solution to the deadlock between the farmers and the government. What can be the possible solution to the very, very, very important farm laws, the three farm laws? Well, the first thing is, what do both the parties, Congresses, that is, and the BJP think about the farm laws? And this is not a political point. This is more of a policy point as to what they think of it from a policy point of view. Interestingly, Captain Amrinder Singh, as the chief minister back in 2003, was the first CM to usher privatization. In those times, of course, the internet was not there. The transportation and the logistics had to be taken care of by the government. But Captain Amrinder Singh, rather with great success, implemented it. Before, of course, the Akali tore it down when they came in 2007. The BJP, which has been saying, oh, we want to double farmers' income, we get, want to get more privatization. They're also thinking on the same lines. In 2019, Congress's manifesto in the state of Punjab, their own economic survey, not the manifesto, their economic survey in the state of Punjab, actually called for more privatization, more crop diversification. So if you look at a policy point of view, both the parties agree to it, that there should be greater privatization, there should be greater crop diversification, there should be lesser use of crop, uh, water-intensive crops. So if you talk from a policy point of view, both the parties are sort of on the same page. But what has been the point of contention for the farmers? Again, from a policy point of view, it has been the sphere of the private sector. Now, call it a socialist hangover, call it the Nehruvian legacy, call it how we are wired to think politically or from a policy perspective. There's always been this apprehension of the private sector. That, oh, the private sector will come and take away the farmer lands, they'll take over the APMC economy, they'll do this, they'll do that. So the point of contention, even with the three laws in place, is that the private sector will render the APMCs useless and perhaps five to 10 years down the lane, kill the whole culture of MSP procurement. Now, of course, that's not going to happen, but that's what the fear is. And that has been the point of contention. Now, what are the possible solutions then? Now, let's come to the million dollar question. What are the possible solutions that the BJP can offer from a policy point of view, not a political point of view? A political solution would be, yeah, we'll increase the procurement and uh, for this year and all those things. That's to be the government already doing. But let's talk from a policy point of view. But the first thing is the guaranteed MSP procurement. Now, there's little surprise that in India with the National Food Security Act, because 600 to 800 million people are covered under the ration scheme, the public distribution system. So even for the next 10 years, at least 600 million people would be need to be fed by the government. So the procurement is never going to stop. The Food Corporation of India is going to procure every year. What the government can offer as a policy solution is a guaranteed MSP procurement, but proportional to the state's production size. So if Punjab is producing crops and Uttar Pradesh is also producing the same crops, say paddy or wheat, 
rather we go with wheat here or madhya pradesh is producing the government can guarantee a proportional procurement at msp and the msp can be offered to be increased by 2% or 3% or 5% every year the numbers can be done separately but the idea is every year a proportional procurement of msp from different states for to 22 23 crops covered under the msp for the next 10 years that's the first guarantee the government can give not that the government needs to give that guarantee mind you the procurement is still going to happen because there is a national food security act as i just emphasized but by putting it in a paper there can be some relief that can be offered to the farmers of course if the farm laws work the way they are supposed to the privatization yields its fruits they display that there is greater profit greater money for the farmers a lot of farmers will gradually move away from selling their crops at msp they would rather trade with the companies themselves so the government does not have to worry that they are creating a culture of dependency on msp but just to give that cushion they can say for 10 years proportional procurement and proportional very importantly because then the farmers of punjab cannot claim that they are eligible or they the government is obligated to disproportionately procure from them that's the first solution the second solution which the government actually offered to the farmers on december 9 and it was a it was it is a solution a lot of people will disagree it because it goes against the ethos of ease of doing business is that any private company trading in a state and the, this taxation should be left at the will of the state so uttar pradesh may want no company dealing in agriculture to be taxed but punjab may want it so it should be left to the state government but the center can say that for the first 5 years of any company trading in any state they have to pay a certain sort of registration tax to the state governments which would be then utilized for the apmc development that's what they can do and the government offered the same solution on december 9 where they said that every private company that needs to operate in a state will have to register with the state government so the government has already offered that solution the farmers surprisingly rejected it and if you go back to the earliest uh, demands of the farmers one of them was that can tax the private companies so that the apmc development does not suffer so this can be the second solution that for the first 3 or 5 years of a company operating in a state they are to be taxed in a certain way so that that tax can be used for the development of the apmc and this will be very helpful in punjab because the apmc structure over there or the environment or the ecosystem is very thriving and the third thing another solution that was already offered by the government on december 9 2020 is that the legal course the legal recourse would be made available for the farmers where in terms of breach of contracts they are not only eligible to approach the stm of a of a district but also the local courts now while the government thought that it would be cost intensive for the farmers to approach the courts the farmers thought differently so might as well offer them that option while negotiating the solutions now the three farm laws are very very important for india's agri economy even today the number of employed people in agriculture directly and indirectly is almost 50% of the population and the contribution to the gdp is mainly 15 to 18% so in the long term the sense is to move people out of agriculture get them into cold storage get them into logistics get them into warehousing transportation there are a lot of avenues so there is no question absolutely no question of the government going back on farm laws and captain amrinder singh has also voiced the same concerns that there's no point in farmers demanding for the for the laws to be taken back or the laws to be repealed there has to be a middle ground and if there is has to be a middle ground it has to address two things the fear that the msp procurement will not be there and the fear that the private sector will overtake the epmcs and these little solutions these little tweaks these are not very uh, significant solutions that need a lot of uh, uh, political bickering or things like that it's a very simple policy tweak if done can actually offer a very smart solution to the deadlock of this farmer protest and the farm laws and assure a new age for the indian agricultural growth thank you mm-hmm.